mic on? Job. Those ones now.
there's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here comfort this place and fill the your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever Sweetest of loves, when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. In your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come for this place and fill the Glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for.
my heart sure whisper, assuring them, and trust your every word, be thou exalted, be thou exalted, Jesus forever, be thou exalted. Oceans rise, 
my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Oh, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Thank you, everybody. Everybody take a minute and uh, greet each other in the name of Christ. folks. It is good to be here with you. Um, let me put a plug in before um, I start speaking tonight. Uh, I was just up at the, the high school and I heard part of what Kevin Lehman had to say and he was dynamic. If you have a chance to go see him tomorrow morning if you're a mom at uh, Atlantic Brethren and tomorrow night at Christ Church, um, you will be blessed. Let's start off with a word of prayer. Lord God, as we look at your word this evening, 
different scriptures. Uh, I pray that you would bless us, that you would lead us to a place maybe that we need to go, that you would encourage us along in our journey, and that you would help us to be changed people. And we just pray this in your name. Amen. I don't have a specific scripture passage to share with you tonight for this message. Um, if there was going to be one, it would probably be John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal or everlasting life. I'm going to be sharing some scripture passages through my message, so, um, and that'll be one of them, but that would probably cover what I'm going to speak on tonight. I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson um, back to when I was a young boy, which was a, a long time ago. Um, there was these things called green stamps. Does anybody remember green stamps? Um, they may have been before your time. You would get the books at the green stamp store, and then I think according to what you would spend at the store, and which you, what you would spend at the store, you would get a specific number, um, and then you would be able to buy something really nice if you got a lot of stamps according to the book. You can't get them today. Though I think in 2002, when I was here doing youth ministry, they tried to bring them back um, at Franklin at the Shop and Save, but it didn't last long. It didn't stick. Get it? Uh, that was pretty bad. Um, but I remember even where the green stamp store was in Erie where I grew up. Do you remember where that was, Evelyn? It is now a Dollar General on 26th Street. Um, but um, must have stopped. they must have stopped um, uh, giving them out when I was in elementary school. Um, that is what they did. These stamps, they were given. Um, and it, instead of paying, uh, they were redeemed for something. Instead of paying for something we wanted, we saved up the stamps for it, and we considered, in a way, of getting something for free, redeeming the stamps. We used the stamps in the place of cash or money to get something that we wanted. Today, I want to look at God as our Redeemer. And like green stamps is used for cash, something else was used for our blood. For you see, we are guilty. Each one of us are sinners, and we all deserve to die. It started way back before green stamps with these people named Adam and Eve. They once walked with God, spent time with God, hang, hung out with God, and, and there was only one thing that they weren't supposed to do. They were not supposed to eat from the tree of, of knowledge. But probably from the time God said not to do it, it was back in the back of their minds to do so. They wanted to do it. If someone tells you not to do something, you want to do it, don't you? You even want to do it even more. Sin wins out a whole lot of times. So, so man sins. This is repeated over and over and over throughout Scripture. We see, we see man uh, sinning throughout the Bible to where we are today in 2015. We just can't stop sinning. We just can't stop sinning. Adam and Eve are kicked out of the garden and are not allowed to go back in, we see in the book of Genesis. They are separated from God. In fact, it says in Genesis 3, it says, um, you must not eat from the, fruit, the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. The people knew that sin caused death. We talked about this a little bit today in our scripture and, and passage this morning, that if we live by flesh, it leads us to death. 
Sin causes death. So over the years, they, what, they, what they would do um, were the priests would uh, sacrifice animals, lambs and goats, um, and this animal's blood would be used in the place of the sinner so that they could escape death and have life. But it seemed like they were constantly sinning and constantly having to offer up burnt offerings, a lot of animals. So God shows us up, shows us once again how much he loves us. God really does want to be in relationship with you and I. And his word becomes man, we see in the book of John. He becomes human, God does. And he dies in our place, becoming the ultimate sacrifice, the death on the cross, where we should have been because of our sinful nature. But why did it have to happen this way? Wouldn't it have been easier to give us a bunch of, uh, of, of, of stamps and every time we sinned, it would cause us a stamp? And then when the book was full, we would have to face God and redeem our books. The more we sinned, the shorter our lives would be. And the less we sinned, the less stamps we would use, thus living longer. I kind of like that. But it had to happen the way it did for a reason. Redemption could only come through sacrifice. We needed a mediator to solve this problem of death. Sin for us. And God's word became human. To do that, just to do that. Now, God became human for a number of reasons. First, to reveal God to humanity, he became human. John 1, 1, 18, reads like this. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. Jesus makes God known to us. God also became human to provide a high priest that is interceding for us, able to sympathize with us, with our human needs, our human emotions, our human loss, our human weakness. Jesus shows us that God knows what it means to be human. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 reads, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus the Son, let us hold firmly to the faith we pr profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You know, another reason that God had to, to come in the form of man was to show us how to live. First Peter 2 says, verse 21 says, to this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. God also came to be our substitute sacrifice. Hebrews 10, 1 through 10 says, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. God came in the form of man. God, came, God in human form came to also bind demonic power. We see in 1 John 3, 8, it says, he who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And he also came to provide a, a final judge to be the final judge at the end time. Another reason why he came in the form of man, it says in John 5, 27, and he has given him authority to judge 
because he is the Son of Man. You see, this is why God became human. Jesus was divine from the beginning to the end. Our faith states that God became man, not man becoming God. And he was our redeemer, Jesus, redeeming God. And yes, he came out, came to hang out with you and us. And, but you can see from this passage, he also came to do a work for us and within us. Many of us are familiar with the passage that I, I started off with tonight, John 3.16. You may have seen it at, at a football game. And many of us have it memorized. And it reads like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That is it in a nutshell. We saw why God had to come in human form. But how does this whole thing happen? Well, if you follow the liturgical calendar, you know that today is Trinity Sunday. And this is a Trinity thing, how Jesus does this, how he, he sacrifices himself for us. Just like God created the tr Trinity, the Son and the Holy Spirit are all in this process. God creator, God redeems um, as the Trinity as well. Psalm 49 tells us that no man could save us. It had to be God. And we see in John 3.16 that it was the Father who sent the Son. The Son had to do a work. And this may be hard to understand, but the way God became man was the work of the Holy Spirit. Or here's another way to look at it. God loved us so much that he didn't want us to be separated up from him forever. So he came to earth in the form of the Son. But the only way to do that was by the work of the Spirit. And just as God, the Father, led the Son through the challenges of life, the Spirit did the works and the miracles that the Son performed. And at the end, it is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that raises Christ from the dead. See, God, Redeemer, worked together to save us. The three in one. And then he leaves the spirit with us so that we can go forth and do his work. When Jesus ascends, we celebrated Ascension Sunday a few weeks ago, he leaves the spirit, the helper, with us. God the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, God's word became flesh, the Son, and dwelt among us through the power of the Holy Spirit, and through, the, through that power, he rose again. Could God have just come and given us stamps to redeem us at the end? <laughs> sure. He could have done that. But you know what? Stamps are man's plan. God's plan is perfect. This is how he loves us perfectly, and we will never fully understand it. Jesus Christ died for us. We will no longer be separated for we are redeemed. Let's pray. Lord God, as we think about you being Redeemer, God the Son, Redeemer, help us to go forth as redeemed people, relying on your spirit to do a mighty work. For Lord, we could do amazing things. Help us to convey this perfect love that you sent to us. And we just pray this in your name. Amen.
Your sin runs deep. Your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I Your 
people said amen. And all the people said amen. So let's go forth as redeemed people, knowing the grace of Christ, the love of our Father God, and the work of the Holy Spirit that works within us and through us. Amen.